In the last few videos, we've been working with conditional expectation. And again, the goal there is to uh, build up to the Rao Blackwell theorem, which will give us uh, the ability to uh, try to find uh, a uniformly minimum variance unbiased estimator. So the goal of this video is just to work a bit with conditional distributions and expectations. That way you uh, can become a bit more comfortable with them. So let's suppose we have two uh, Poisson random variables, x1 and x2, and they're independent from one another, and they have uh, different rate parameters, so they're not identically distributed. So x1 has rate parameter uh, lambda1, x2 rate parameter lambda2. Our goal is to find the distribution and then the expectation of x given y, where y is just the sum of the two. So the first thing that we can do for this problem is to note that uh, y, so that's x1 plus x2, has a Poisson distribution with rate parameter lambda1 plus lambda2. And that's something that we've, uh, we've shown before through, I think we've used moment generating functions, you can also just use the PMF. And so what we'd like to do is find the distribution of x1, and we'll say, you know, maybe x1 is equal to some number k, given y is equal to some little y. Now we can do this by definition, so this would be the probability that x1 is equal to k and y is equal to some little y over the probability that y is equal to y. And once we do that, we can notice that the numerator should be equivalent to the probability that x1 is equal to k um, and x2 is equal to y minus k. And that's based on the fact that the constraint we have here is that x1 plus x2 uh, must be equal to, you know, is equal to y by definition. So we get this uh, from that fact. And then, of course, the denominator is the probability that y is equal to y. So now we can plug in our distributions um, using the fact that we have independence. So in the, in the numerator, we have a joint probability, but it's joint over two random variables, x1 and x2, that are independent from one another. And so we can multiply their probabilities. So independence allows us to write, well, the first uh, PMF would be e to the negative lambda 1 times lambda 1 to the k over k factorial. And then uh, the PMF for x2 equal to y minus k, that would be, so we're multiplying by e to the negative lambda 2 times lambda 2 to the y minus k over y minus k factorial. And then we have um, a PMF in the denominator, which I'll just flip and multiply. So flipping and multiplying will give us a y factorial in the numerator. So again, multiplication. And then in the denominator, we'll have e to the negative lambda 1 plus lambda 2, and then times lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raised to the y. So here we could do some, some grouping and some rearranging, a bit of algebra, and we end up getting uh, the following, which is y choose k. So that rearranging there um, remember the the choose function 
is just uh, factorials, right? It's y factorial over k factorial times y minus k factorial. And so that you can get by rearranging those factorial terms. And then we should also have a lambda 1 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raised to the k. And then a lambda 2 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raised to the y minus k. And that should look familiar, right? That should look like our x1 given y has a binomial distribution with number of trials y, right? Our y shows up here and here. Those are the two places where n shows up. So that's the number of trials and probability of success lambda 1 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2 because that's the term that's raised to the k, uh, which is, you know, what we're setting our random variable equal to. So we end up getting the PMF of a binomial. Now, that's the first part. So we've answered the distribution part. What about the expectation part? So if we wanted the expectation of x1 given y, well, the expectation of a binomial is our n number of trials times probability of success. So that would be y times lambda 1 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2. And we've mentioned this before, but this shows it pretty explicitly. A conditional expectation is um, a function of what you're conditioning on. So the expected value of x1 conditioned on y will have a y in it. And so for different values of y, we get a different conditional expectation.